Up with Crim begins now. Starting today, small business owners can apply for relief grants in Idaho. Coming up, what you need to do to apply for your piece of the pie. Nurses are kind of in the middle of everything. And when we do a little bit of social work, a little bit of physical therapy. We are in the final two days of National Nurses Week. And this morning, a labor and delivery nurse shares some of the ways her job is keeping her positive during the pandemic. Well, good morning and welcome to Up With Creme on our Monday morning. I'm Jen York, joined by Joshua Robinson and Thomas Patrick this morning. Thomas, how you doing today? I'm doing just swell. I love filling in uh, for Evan right here on the morning show. I know it can be uh, a change of pace, but it always energizes me. So I got a lot more adrenaline than I thought I would have at 7 o'clock in the morning. So hopefully that kind of energy is contagious for our Monday. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. And Thomas will be with us all week. Joshua, how was your Mother's Day? Doing good. Feeling that energy. I got to admit. But you know, it's funny is sometimes you have to some, uh, have some creative ways to find energy when we're waking up and sometimes starting work at like 3, 3.30 in the morning. But we love doing it. We love bringing good stuff like Thomas's forecast is coming up and plenty of other great stories this morning, as well as some of the local headlines that I know, Jen, you're going to be bringing us here in just a second. Yeah, we'll get into those here right now. This is what you need to know here on our Monday morning. Here are three things. Vice President Mike Pence tested negative for coronavirus. This is after his press secretary contracted the virus. White House leaders announced Pence is self-isolating. However, they say he does plan to return to work today at the White House. Pence's press secretary is at least the second person in the administration to test positive for coronavirus. Sorry. Uh, it is scary to go to work. It's a small, crowded place. You know, it's a little bit risky, but, but you have to do it because you have to serve your country. Now, at least three top health leaders are now self-quarantining as a precaution. It includes the nation's leading infectious disease expert, Dr. Anthony Fauci. Tomorrow, Dr. Fauci is said to testify before a Senate committee, despite going into a modified quarantine. This will be his first appearance before Congress since March. He will testify alongside the director of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and they will discuss reopening the economy amid the pandemic. Well, this weekend, a line stretched out the door at Northern Quest Resort and Casino. Leaders say it is one of the first casinos to open in the state. Now, crews did modify their initial safety measures. They opened all machines so visitors can spread out, but they're also limiting the floor to just 50 percent capacity. Employees are wearing masks and work to clean machines between use. And big changes are coming to SeaTac International Airport. Starting next Monday, all visitors and employees will be required to wear a cloth face covering. Right now, SeaTac is just under 4,000 passengers per day, seeing 4,000 passengers a day. Normally, it's about 50,000 people. Leaders say the airport received about $192 million as part of the CARES Act. And it is now looking at new health initiatives and public policy to help restore confidence in air travel. Well, starting today, American Airlines, Southwest, Alaska and Spirit will also enforce mask rules. Delta, United, JetBlue and Frontier already require face coverings from passengers. And starting today, Amtrak will also be requiring passengers and employees to wear a mask. Passengers are expected to provide their own face coverings and will not be allowed to board if they do not have one. That's a quick look at your headlines this morning, especially if you do intend to travel here. It sounds like there's a lot that you need to know before you go, but it, it does include in most cases that you need to be wearing a mask. And we do want to turn our attention now to the weather. Another sunny start to the week. Thomas Patrick is in for Evan Arani. Thomas, what can we expect today? Yeah, today's going to be a really nice day weather wise. I was actually thinking of this because we have a few avid gardeners in our newsroom and they always look at the low temperatures because we don't want them too cold because we're still a little bit worried about a frost or a freeze. But when it's 7 o'clock in the morning and it's 50 degrees outside, it starts getting a lot safer to make sure that uh, we can plant those gardens. In fact, you could probably get a head start on that this week with rain in the forecast to help water it along. Uh, today's going to be really nice outside. A mix of sun and cloud cover will go from 50 this morning up to about 70 this afternoon and another great chance to get outside. If anything, a little bit breezy this afternoon, uh, more cloud cover late in the day, but our temperature should easily be 60s to a 
around 70 for the afternoon hour. So all in all, a really nice day for today if you don't mind a little bit of a breeze. And that's the thing. The winds never really calmed down through the overnight hours. They were gusting up to 30, 35 miles per hour. Right now they're sitting at 15 miles per hour at the moment in Spokane. That's probably where they'll stay throughout the day. But here's our weather system that I'm going to be tracking throughout the course of this week. Not a one day event. Could be a multiple day event of rain and showers for the area. Hence, you might want to get a head start on gardening today before that rain arrives. We'll be timing out this weather system throughout the course of this week. Coming up in just a few minutes. Thomas, thank you very much for checking in. We will see you back in a few minutes as we move on to other news this morning. 705 now here on your Monday morning and in Idaho starting today applications will be accepted for Idaho's small business grants. Governor Brad Little has set aside $300 million for Idaho small businesses and he says this is the largest amount of coronavirus relief funds set aside by any state. Let's welcome back our Nicole Hernandez this morning, who is live with a closer look at that grant. Nicole, good morning. Hey, good morning, Joshua. So more than 30,000 Idaho small businesses can actually apply for and potentially qualify for this new state grant, and they can start applying for that grant starting today. So the Idaho state says that they're doing this to help small businesses that are struggling through this coronavirus response. And according to Governor Little, the $300 million is an investment into Idaho's employers. So according to Governor Brad Little, no state in uh, the country is putting up a larger amount from the coronavirus relief fund to help small businesses with cash support. The grants are meant to help during Idaho's phase one of reopening. Small businesses can get up to $10,000 and businesses will be eligible if they've not already received an SBA backed payroll protection loan or if they've gotten less than $10,000 from that type of loan. So to apply, small businesses must create a taxpayer access point account through the tax commission. In the Idaho's current phase, 90% of businesses can open, but to keep everyone safe, any business that does open must follow physical distancing, sanitation, and other protective measures. So if Idaho State um, ends up meeting certain criteria, the next phase, phase two, could potentially start the, just this Saturday, so less than a week, but they have to meet certain criteria before that can happen. In the meantime, Idaho is going to be working on more testing, making sure they're doing the correct contact investigations for positive cases, and making sure that their health care system has the correct capacity. Live in Spokane, I'm Nicole Hernandez. All right, Nicole, thank you. Turning our attention to a story that certainly has a lot of people talking this morning. We are getting our first look at a proposed piece of new art in Riverfront Park here in Spokane. So take a look at the rendering here. This is what I think a few people have some questions about. So this is tentatively titled the beaver. It's described as a bronze piece with a swivel sitting area. Visitors will be able to sit on the beaver's tail and then swivel around and take in the views of the park. Now, right now, the committee that approved this rendering here to move forward has yet to suggest a location for it within the park, but it was among 26 submissions and one of four finalists for that new art piece installation. So let's take a look at the runners up here. One includes a disc structure that bounces sound back and forth. Another includes a maze-like structure with LED lighting. And the third includes a trout made of colorful glass and metal. But this morning, we want your take. Do you want to see the beaver in Riverfront Park? You can vote now on the CREM2 mobile app or on CREM.com slash vote. And certainly you at home have a lot to say about this piece. So one viewer writes, it looks like an alien with gummy worms on its head. It's rather shocking. Lisa simply called the statue different. And Amy asked if the statue proposition was a joke. Yikes. So again, right now, this is just a proposed piece of art. This afternoon, it'll go before the Riverfront Park Committee for approval. And if approved, it will then go to the park board for the final say. You can submit public comment on this piece through 11 a.m. And then today's meeting is set for 3 p.m. And we do want to remind you that all of those meetings are open to the public. Right now, they're going to be taking place virtually if you do want to take part. But yeah, they are open to the public. You can weigh in and see what our city leaders are doing. But boy, a lot of you have some questions about this one. I think the most common one, Joshua, and you if you didn't tell you the title, people are asking, 
Well, what is it supposed to be? I, I know that, you know, we have, this is just a rendering, but you described, Jen, what it's described as. You know, you sit on this beaver and the tail swivels. We, we don't get so many of those things from this single picture. It just seems unusual. The, the color is, is odd. Uh, I just think we need more. I think if we, the more information we get about it, I think the more this will become clear because yeah, I'm speechless. I don't, I think I echo sentiments that everybody else is sharing, right? Yeah, I think there's a lot of questions and here's some background information to um, this piece and all of the finalists uh, are Northwest artists. So that's something to be proud of. You know, these are locals doing these uh, pieces. Um, there's also an option of possibly renaming the statue. It would need the Spokane tribe's approval before it uses a Salish name. So that is something that's also going to be discussed today, which of course would be, uh, of course, honoring our local mm -hmm. tribes here. So that's something that is also on the table with that piece. But I think the rendering is just what has people <laughs> scratching their heads. I think a lot of people are just very confused of what it actually is and if it's really going to look like that. I'm choosing to believe, Jen, that it is so much more than what that single picture is. That's <laughs> be because that's all we have right now. And so how could we not be asked to judge based on that? It's such an odd sort of situation we have. But I think that background that you gave, Jen, does sort of show there's more that we can learn about this thing. Maybe there's something else we can see that gives us sort of better feelings about it. It has to make the top four for a reason, right? Yeah, so it was in the final four, and then the uh, committee, which has uh, both uh, you know members of the public on it and also park employees, they came together and decided that was the one that they're going to put forth, you know, forward for the other uh, Riverfront Park Committee. So again, that will be discussed today, and mm -hmm. then if it gets approved today, it moves on to another phase of if it's going to get approved or not. So it's still just a proposal, but certainly has a lot of people talking. We'll keep our eyes on it. Coming up this morning, National Nurses Week continues and we recognize and celebrate our local health care workers. This morning, a labor and delivery nurse shares some of the ways her job keeps her positive during these tough days.